exercise two. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at uh, MX's functionality with regards to revolve features, as well as sketch mirrors and some uh, additional items. So let's begin. Start a new part file. Call this, make this E2. And we'll begin going into the sketch tool and sketching on the X and Z plane. Hit OK. Now we're going to take and draw a vertical line at the origin. And don't worry about the length. And we're going to draw a horizontal line from the origin. Again, don't worry about the length on those. Just hit Escape, and then what you can do is you can Control select both, and then right click. Actually, I just have to do them one at a time. Uh, click, right click, and go to Convert to Reference. Right click, Convert to Reference. Move this out of the way, as well as this. And now we'll continue on here. We can select the Line tool, and just a little bit off to the left here. We're going to click and we're going to drag up a one inch, approximately one inch high line. And then off that, click and drag a short little line about 0.4 ish. Get that close. And then off of that one, click and drag an angled line, but don't let it contact the center line. Keep it above the center line, just like I have here. Click, click again, drag across about an inch horizontal line. Off of that point, click, drag up another line almost an inch high. Click. And drag a short little line. It's going to be about a quarter inch. And then off that, just click and drag it straight down and connect it so it's vertical and it connects to the horizontal line. All right, now we could go in, hit Escape. We could change some of the dimensions around. First of all, if we look at our print manual, we have to have a 0.75 distance here. So we'll go ahead and put 3.7. And now we're going to go to the dimension tool. Select this line to the center line. Type in 0.375. And go ahead and click on this line here. Try it straight up. It's going to be 0.4. If you want to, you can zoom up a little closer. We're going to put an angle dimension. Click on this angled line right in the middle, and then this horizontal vertical line. And between the two, click to drop it. That's going to be 18 degrees. And then click on this dimension here, and just 0.25. We could double click on the dimensions too. It's not that we have to do this, um, but we'll just add some new ones here. Then click here to here. This is going to be one inch. Actually, let me just double check that. Yeah, this was one inch. Okay, we should be okay once we get the, this mirror to cross. Okay, now to mirror it. If we go down here, we can click on this little arrow, uh, this little arrow to the right, find the mirror curve. And what we're going to do is click and drag a fence to surround what we want to mirror. And then the center line entities, you click on this button here, select the center line, and hit OK. And so now we have the symmetric geometry on the other side, side, which we can continue to add our dimensions to. And we're going to add a dimension between this line and this line. It's going to be 0.25. And then a dimension between this bottom line and this top line, that's going to be 2 inches. And finally, from this line to the center line, we're going to make that 2.5, and then hit escape. And we're ready to revolve this now. So we're going to go to the revolve button, which is just to the right of the extrude, go to revolve. And from here, it already has our sketch selected, so we can just select it from two points. And there's several ways you can do this, but we're going to go by the two point method. We can select the bottom of this line and click on it up here. 
Oops. Hold on a second. Let's try that again. Select our geometry. Oh, there it is in all the ends. Click on this. It's on the bottom. It's at the top. There we go. All right, you can see the it's revolving 360 degrees. If you want it to be 180, you can type 180. That would be half. We want 360. We want it to be all the way around. Okay, I'm going to right click on this old sketch and just hide it. Now we're going to add some blends. If you go to the Edge Blend tool, you see it says it's 0.1. I'm going to go ahead and select these edges here and one on the bottom as well. One on the bottom and inside. Hit Apply. Type in 0.5 and proceed to add some additional blends on this edge here, this edge here. And just get the other side as well. Hit OK. All right, and that pretty much concludes this exercise. Although there are tools here for rendering, and I'd like to share with you some of those. If you right-click this gray area here, you'll find um, true shading. A true shading is rather interesting. There's a couple different ways to shade this. If you click on true shading, it gives you a rather neat appearance here. And there's different backgrounds. So if you want it to be darker, very dark, you can adjust it. Make it look quite uh, interesting. You can turn off the reflections or turn them on. Turn off the shadows or turn them on. There's also the show the grid. Like that. If you click on bottom, um, there's some other options there. Can adjust the floor, global reflections, uh, metal global reflections, different options and such. Okay, there's also the rendering tools in here. If you right click and find the visualization uh, here, are actually, some other options. Um, it's not necessarily there's a high quality image, unfortunately, it's locked out on the learning edition. But it's a pretty phenomenal image that it would create if you have the ability to turn that on. Uh, there's some other options in here as well as capturing camera. Let's right click again and visualize shape. And here are some additional options. You can uh, shade it. This uses a photorealistic renderer. There's the advanced studios as well. Um, but if you go over here to the left, you'll find a number of different options for the uh, showrooms, environments. You could click on a different scene. See how that affects it. Okay, in this case, um, it just needs to be re rendered. Now, depending upon these scenes, some of them are more intensive, takes longer. Um, this is in the educational edition. I would recommend a high quality image if you're going to use this if you have that functionality in the full blown version. I'm going to go ahead and kill this though to stop it. Uh, we don't have all day here. But basically um, there are other there's materials in here as well. Here's the materials editor and you can see that there's some nice different features like if you want glass just drag it onto the surface there. If you're to start the shade. Although I have it set to higher quality there. So regardless, there's uh, quite a few options there to play with and uh, entertain what you think looks best. In the true shading, I rather like. You could actually work in this environment. 
rotate it. It actually looks pretty crisp and clean there. So that concludes exercise two.